Hello friends. Now don't ever say that I don't treat you to fine content on this channel because in this video for the first time on all of YouTube you're going to see two of the rarest upright vacuum cleaners ever. Let's check them out. <laughs> Now this is really special actually. I never ever thought for one moment that I would have two of these cleaners in uh, a video or indeed in a room actually, to be honest with you. Uh, th this, is, this is the first time for me I've ever seen two of these together at any point in my entire life. Uh, indeed, I think it's the only two machines I have ever seen uh, in all of my 27 years. <coughs> So you've probably seen the title, so you know what we're going to look at. Um, so let me show them to you. This is the big reveal, and it is quite something. So this is my McDonald Electric 250. Infection blue. And this is my friend John's McDonald Electric 250 two McDonald electrics in the same place in the same video. Now there's no other video on YouTube that has two of these cleaners uh, and indeed I think the only video that's on YouTube currently of one of these in action is my one um, and it's my blue one so I'll put a link uh, so you can go and watch it. You can go and watch my one actually being used. Now these are genuinely fascinating cleaners. They are interrelated with Auric uh, because they are essentially Auric's. The Auric uh, uh, 4000XL or XL4000, I can never remember which way around it goes, was essentially this machine. This machine and this machine. I cannot explain to you the history and all of the different versions of these uh, cleaners because it is so confusing that it just basically blows my mind. So what I will do is put a link in the description below to a video of a couple of guys in the States who are um, looking at very early Oryx. Uh, they've got a Whirlpool which is uh, marketed or branded as an Oryx which I believe was the very first cleaner. Then they have uh, an Auric 4000 XL, which looks like these machines. And indeed their 4000 XL has this um, pedal release on the back. And both of these cleaners have that pedal release shown here. And then they have another cleaner, which is an Auric 4300 XL, which looks the same as this, but doesn't have the pedal release. And interestingly, their early one, the 4000, has the, cl the classic Oryx style bag. Now these McDonald's have basically what I would call a housemade style bag. If you look at the housemade over there, um, it's got a clip on the top that uh, keeps the top of the bag closed top of the outer bag closed. i just show you, just to prove that I'm not lying to you, this one has it as well. So there's various sort of different in incarnations of these cleaners. Some of them have the uh, pedal release on the back, some of them don't. Some of them have the housemade style bag that these machines have. Some of them have the Oryx style bag, which is where you have the big zip that runs sort of halfway down the bag. It runs all, all the way over um, and around to here. Now, Interestingly, um, when I went and picked John's machine up from him, he showed me a picture uh, of an eBay uh, auction. Well it, well, it wasn't an auction, I, I, at least I don't think it was. I think it was a buy it now uh, for £129. And it was a, a mustard colour uh, McDonald Electric 250. And that machine did not have this style bag. That machine had the Oryx style bag with the zip that goes um, up and over. No, I genuinely have no idea which ones of these are early, which ones are late. 
there's a video on YouTube of um, a 1970s advert for the McDonald Electric of, of a lady using it to clean her already clean house. Uh, and I can't remember what bag that's got on it. So that might be a different one. Uh, and again, I can't remember if that's got the pedal release on it or not. If I can find it, I'll, I'll link it in the uh, description below. But it's, it's, un it's unbelievable to have two of these machines in the house. Now, as I say, this belongs to my friend John. And John has asked me if I wouldn't mind doing a restoration on this uh, cleaner. And of course, I said yes, absolutely, as long as I can film it. Because I think it would be really interesting to make a series on this machine being restored. Because we can take it apart, we can have a look inside, we can restore it back to its former glory, uh, and we can actually see it in use. I think it'd be really cool as well to have them both going at the same time. But that'd be like, that'd be, oh my God, that might, yeah, that would be, that'd be 500 watts of power. 500 watts with these two beasts going at the same time. Can you imagine that? The cleaning power, God, it, I mean, it might melt my house wiring. It would be just, oh, be too much power to handle. Um, but that's the plan anyway, so I thought that would make quite a cool video series. I don't think I've ever actually taken this one apart, I think it worked when I got it. So I've never seen inside it, I've never seen what the motor looks like. So we can do that together uh, and we'll check it out, so we'll get this restored and then we can get it back to John as well and then he can, he can have it and he can enjoy it and, and he, he can love it. Now it is really interesting just having a look <clears throat> at these machines and I can see a couple of differences. So if I turn this around, John's one has got this like really huge grommet here at the bottom of the handle. My one does not have that. Uh, I think the cable on my one should be going through here. This plastic is sort of starting to break, so that's probably why it's not there anymore. But yeah, John's one has this interesting grommet. Um, my one has a little clip at the top of the top section of the handle just there to, to store the cord on it so that keeps it up when you're using it and John's one has unfortunately broken off if you have a look there you can just see that should be a little um, clip that's broken on John's which is a shame um, John's one has a slight problem with the uh, with the ratchet as well as you can see there that it's not really holding it in place it's definitely something we need to look at I'm just a bit careful with mine. Yeah, mine's mine works much better than his one does. Um, and it is quite interesting to see. Now, <laughs> I've never, I've never really seen this before. But I've been storing mine up in my attic, which I really shouldn't have done. Um, and obviously, it's very hot and very cold up there. And you'll notice that my furniture guard has changed colour. Hopefully, you can see that on the camera. I've just, I've just peeked through the bags. Hi. Yes, it's me. Hi. Um, yeah, this has gone quite yellow, whereas John's one is um, still quite white. I wonder if you can notice if I stole it and switch them over. He might do. Especially if he watches this this video. Now, John did say to me that uh, the inside of the cloth bag is quite dirty on this one. So I think before we turn it on, we really should clean inside this bag. Now I'm just going to put mine down for a second. I'm be very, very careful with these. I still, I still, I still can't get over the fact I've got two of them in the house. It's just unbelievable. Now we should be able to release this bag relatively easily. We just have a feel. Oh yeah, we've got a belt. The belt feels pretty good. You've got to be careful. Um, so you can you can detach the uh, the cloth bag by turning this this little lock here. So if I I'm going to turn this to unlock. And again, I'm going to be very, very careful because I do not want to break it. And we should be able to, yes, there we go, remove the cloth bag. So there we go. It's uh, looking a bit naked and I can feel in there there's quite a lot of dirt in that bag. Uh, I think we'll probably give it a wash as well, just to make sure it's all nice and spick and span for him. Uh, and there we go. If you have a look here now, you can see the nakedness, the nakedness of the McDonald's. And it's just so, it's just so primitive. It, it, and it is so incredibly light. It's almost, well, the legend goes that 
the original machine, the, the Whirlpool one, uh, was where they'd just taken one of their power heads and they'd put a dirty fan motor in it, stuck a handle on it, and then put, put a, a bag on the front. And that is very much evident here. It is just like a power head. You, you can imagine that this being the head of a cylinder machine from the 70s. It was, we didn't really have them over here. Uh, power heads didn't, didn't really become that popular. Well, they never became really popular, but they only ever sort of came on the market in the early 80s, I suppose. Um, we didn't really have them in the 70s. But they, they did in the States. They were always very popular in the States because they had shag pile and deep pile and all that stuff. And we just had like cut pile and woven pile and just nothing, nothing thick that needed a good brushing. Um, so our cylinder machines were more than happy to cope with that. But uh, yeah, it just, it just kind of feels it's very much like a, like a power head. If you just look underneath, it's just like, yeah, you would kind of expect it to be like that. One other thing that is quite cool about these is that they were all made in West Germany. So they're German machines and you kind of expect a bit more quality from a German machine, but there's no quality here in either of these bad boys. There's just, just nothing at all. Uh, it's very cheap, very basic. There's not much to them at all. Yeah, so there we go. So that's <laughs> picking up with one hand. I could pick it up with, with, with one finger, to be honest with you. I'll put them down there. Uh, let's just open the bag up and see what kind of state we've got in here. Yeah, John will be terrified now because I'm showing uh, showing the filth in his bag. Um, I have to be very careful. I don't want to break this plastic. I hate these. Oh, it's very hard to take this off. It's not, it's not designed particularly well. You pull it down like that and you pull it down and then you open it up. So. Hopefully we've got an original McDonald bag in here, uh, but we'll see what it is. Let's, let's pull this out. Here we go. Let's pull out the, um, ah, here we go. Ooh, 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 okay. Well, that is quite something. Now it's actually coming apart at the bottom. <laughs> Aren't we all? <laughs> Um, and it's, I think it's got a bit damp in the past, but no, no, interestingly, there's no branding on this bag at all. It's very much like a generic dust bag. If I just show you this side, it's just got a bit of red marking there. Uh, it says replace filter bag when filled to this line. So that's pretty much all you should be using. Um, and it says here on the front, uh, disposal bags for upright cleaners. This product is made by the original makers of vacuum bags in Great Britain. The original makers of vacuum bags in Great Britain. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? I wonder who that was. There's no company name or logo on here, which is a real shame. Um, and we've got we've got A, D, C, and B. <laughs> A, D, A, D, C, and B. Brilliant. That is just yep. Yeah, that that's perfectly logical. That. Yep. Yeah, okay. Got it. So do A, do D, do C, do B. Yeah, end up with a bag like that over there. It's, something's on fire. So A, hold bag here. B, hook in here. C, pull up. D, slip towards handle. <laughs> Why don't they just say put it on the hole? <laughs> look, 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 look. There's a hole there. Look, it's a hole. Put that. Put that bit. That bit there. Put it on the hole. I mean, how? Oh, okay. Now that isn't that's interesting. I am not sure that is quite right because that just basically flops around on the handle. There's nothing there. I, I'm not entirely sure that's the right bag for it. I mean, it probably it's a bit dusty. <coughs> oh, it's lovely old dust. Love it. But the, yeah, there's no seal there. Look, you can just see in the in the camera shot. But there's nothing, you can just like, eh, eh, yeah, eh, eh. So I don't know if that's right. And in fact, if I was going to put money on it, it probably isn't. But uh, yeah, interesting. Okay, okay, fine. Ooh, that, is, that is a dirty hole. Um, 
Now let's have a look in here and see what kind of state we're in. Let's balance that like so. Um, it's not too bad. I've seen a lot worse. Have a look in there. Hopefully you can see that. It's my finger. Hi. Uh, it's not too bad in there, but at, uh, I think before we turn this machine on, we definitely need to give this bag a clean. Um, as I say, I will wash it, but let's use our old friend, the 87, and um, give this bag a bit of a clean out, and then we'll turn John's uh, McDonald on and see how it sounds. Yeah, let's uh, bring this round this way, and hopefully we can get 87 in there. I'm using a Dyson tool, <gasps> sacrilege. Dyson tool on an, on an Electrolux. But I thought this was quite a good one to use because it's got a really long bent end. I can get it right down into the bag. So let's turn the 87 on and uh, start cleaning this out. Not bad question. Slightly awkward to do. Right, there we go. Okay, my back like so. That's looking a bit better now. Uh, you, you probably thought to yourself, "My God, he's making a real meal of that," but it's not easy to do. Actually, um, this is very thick material. You can see there. Look, you see how thick that is. It's not like a little um, Hoover Junior bag or anything like a external bag you find at a Junior. It's really thick material. It's surprisingly high quality, actually. Um, but you can see. Inside it now, it's not quite as dirty as it was. So big thanks to the 87 for uh, sorting that out. So let's pop this back on the McDonald. I won't bother putting the uh, paper bag back in. Um, and we'll just give it a run and we'll see how it sounds. Okie dokie, here's uh, our McDonald. Let's get a bit of dust off. And let's take our freshly vacuumed bag and pop it on. This shouldn't be too difficult. And then we rotate this little catch again, and that locks the bag in place, and that locks it up. Um, and then we'll pop the bottom one on as well. It's just so auric, it's just unbelievably auric, it really is. Um, and now, let's get the plug out. Uh, there we go. And we'll plug him in and see what he sounds like. It's a very definite lean there, as you can see. It really shouldn't lean forward that much. There's the vertical position. Um, 
Yeah, I think it's to do with the ratchet, to be honest with you. It just very much leans forward. I think mine does it as, as well, although not quite as much. I wonder if it's something to do with the hood. It should kind of like stop there because um, there's like a, a, a raised bit on, on what looks like the fan casing and that should stop it. But this one, no, it definitely, definitely has a very much of forward lean to it. So let's, um, let's just pop the flex in. Flex in, pop the plug in. And we'll see what it sounds like. This is going to be interesting. Um, <clears throat> I'm sure we'll get a big poof of dust as well. I'm going to hold it back like that. Well, that sounds really good, actually. That sounds, yeah, that sounds very, very healthy. Very healthy. Um, more healthy than I had expected it to sound, actually. I like the way the motor starts. It's almost like it's got a slow start on it. It, it sort of, it doesn't go bang. It goes. It just sat making silly noises. In silly noises now. It's ridiculous. I, I don't know if you can hear that, but yeah, it 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 kind of it accelerates when you turn it on. It's quite cool. Awesome. It's like the pitch goes up. It just, it, it, the pitch goes up as the machine sort of gathers, gathers pace, I suppose. Let's pop that cable back around. Um, I'm curious to see if mine sounds the same. Let's, uh, let's pop that one over there. Pop John's there. Let's grab mine again. Um, has this got a bag in it? Yeah, mine's got a bag in it. I'm interested to see what that bag is. I doubt it's a McDonald bag. Right, let's just unwind this bit. <coughs> oh, a bit dusty. Right, what sound does mine make? <laughs> yeah, it's almost exactly the same, actually. That's quite cool. I'm just going to open the bag. Now the bag's come off. Oh, lordy. Okay, so I. I obviously found, ugh, yeah, this is where I was doing the demonstration of the pickup for the, of the oats, which have basically just completely missed the dust bag. So I found this EcoClean bag, and that might be for, that actually might be for a housemaid. That, that, could, that could very much be a housemaid bag, um, but it's obviously popped off, and um, yep, all of the dirt has gone into the bag. So mine is in pretty much the same state as John's was. I wonder if that was like a common theme to them. Because that does kind of fit, actually. If I turn it on... Oh. Yeah, look. The bag does kind of fit. That <laughs> just... <coughs> that shot oats in my face. <coughs> so it does kind of fit on there and it seals, but I think it just pops off. So I'm going to have to find a better way of doing it. Let's put this mess now all over the table. Yeah, so that's not <coughs> that's not a particularly good way of doing it. I wonder then if uh, people's houses in the 70s where they were using these were just literally covered in dust. There was just dust everywhere because um, the bags just kept popping off their McDonald electrics. Um, and just spewing dust everywhere. <coughs> ah, oh, that went all up my nose. It was very nice. Very, very unpleasant. <laughs> so anyway, there we go. I'm going to end this video there. We know that uh, John's machine works and uh, we've got a few things to do to it. In the next video on this machine, we will take it apart and have a look inside see what's going on down there, see, um, yeah, see, I'm just really curious to see how much like a modern Auric, or a relatively modern Auric, it is like in there. And interesting to see the motor as well. I wonder if we could do like a side-by-side -side comparison with an Auric 8000 series, just to, just to see how similar or different they are. 
inside that would that'd be quite interesting I'll, I'll have a think about that and um yes see what i can do but uh, that's it for now thank you ever so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video uh these two mcdonald electric machines in the same place and uh yeah i'll see you guys in the next video don't forget to do the usual commenting subscribing and liking and you better comment subscribe and like if you want to see the next videos i'm warning you I am warning you. I'm not warning you. I don't mind it. You do what you like. It's your special day. See you soon. Bye.